Okay, this is question four of November 2020, paper one. Here we are given that hx is equal to negative 3 over x minus 1 plus 2. And the question says, write down the equation of the asymptotes of h. Now the equation in its original format is hx equals to a over x minus b plus q. The q value represents the horizontal asymptote. And the x minus p equal to 0 represents the vertical asymptote. And the a value represents the quadrants. So if a is positive, the, the diagram would be in quadrant 1 and 3. And if a is negative, the diagrams would be in quadrant 2 and 4. So taking that information and applying it to this, I have the asymptotes, the vertical asymptote is x minus 1 equal to 0, therefore x is equal to 1. And the horizontal asymptote is simply the q value, which is plus 2. So y is equal to plus 2. The next question says, Determine the equation of the axis of symmetry that has a negative gradient. So graphically, I have two asymptotes. X is equals to 1. And Y is equals to plus 2. And these two asymptotes meet at the coordinates of 1 and 2. So I have an X and a Y value. And if the axis of symmetry has a negative gradient, its gradient would be equal to negative 1. If the question was for an axis of symmetry with a positive gradient, the gradient would be equal to plus 1. So now I have a coordinate and a gradient, and that is enough information for me to use the equation of a line. And this equation is on the formula sheet. So the y1 value would be 2, so it's y minus 2. The gradient is equals to negative 1, and it's x minus 1. And if I multiply out, I have y minus 2, negative x plus 1. And in simply transposing, it is negative x plus 3. So this is the equation of the axis of symmetry with a negative gradient. The third question says, sketch the graph of h showing the asymptotes and the intercepts. We already have the asymptotes from our first question. We now need to find the intercepts. So for the x-intercept, I would set y equal to 0. So that would mean I have 0 equals to negative 3 over x minus 1 plus 2. And in order to solve the x-intercept, I need to transpose the 2, which becomes negative 2. And I'm going to multiply with the denominator of x minus 1. And if I multiply out, I find negative 2x plus 2 is equal to negative 3. Therefore, x is equal to 5 over 2. Then the y-intercept is where x is equal to 0. So I have y is equal to negative 3 over 0 minus 1 plus 2, which is 3 plus 2. Therefore, the y-intercept is equal to 5. Make sure you name the y-axis and the x-axis. And it's good practice to name the origin. We know 
that the x asymptote or the vertical asymptote is x is equals to 1 and the horizontal asymptote is y is equals to 2. Then we know that the x intercept is 2 and a half or 5 over 2. So that would be on the right hand side of this vertical asymptote. And the y intercept is 5. So that will be above the horizontal asymptote. Now we need to be careful when we draw in the curve. Make sure that your curves do not cross the asymptotes because this graph does not exist at the asymptotes. So in the other quadrant, you will never cross the asymptotes and you can indicate the diagram with an arrow. And also it's good practice to name the graph. So this is the graph of H or you can write it out HX in the full equation. The next question says, the graphs of fx, which is a half and a brackets x plus 5 squared minus 8, and gx equals to a half x plus 9 over 2, are sketched below. A is the turning point of f, so that's the turning point. The axis of symmetry of f intersects the x-axis at E and the line G at D. So it is saying the axis of symmetry, which is the x value at the turning point, intersects at D and E. C is the y-intercept of F and G. So C is the y-intercept for both graphs. The first question is, write down the coordinates of A. So the coordinates of A can be read directly from this equation. If you remember the standard form, it will be A x minus p squared plus q and a represents the turning point and the turning point from this equation is p q so the a coordinate is p which is a sign change so it's minus 5 and q which is negative 8 4.2.2 says, write down the range of F. Now, range refers to the restrictions on Y values. And we know that the turning point is negative 5 and negative 8. So this is the minimum value of the graph in terms of Y values. So there is minus 8. And you would see all of the other Y values would be higher than negative 8. Therefore, the range is y is bigger or equal to negative 8. The next question says, calculate the values of m and n. So m and m is the x and y coordinates of the point d. Now we know that D is on the axis of symmetry, so M would be equals to negative 5, and N lies on the straight line, and the equation of the straight line is a half X plus 9 over 2. So if I have GX, which is equals to a half X, plus 9 over 2. I already have the x coordinate of the point, so I would substitute negative 5 in the place of x. And if I simplify, I would see that this y value is equal to 
2. And this also represents the n value, which is the y coordinate of d. Therefore, m is equal to negative 5 and n is equal to 2. The next question says, calculate the area of OCDE. So what I recommend is that you highlight the figure for yourself first. And next up, you want to fill in the information what you have. I know that E is on the axis of symmetry. So E's coordinate would be negative 5 and 0. O's coordinate is the origin, so it's 0 and 0. Therefore, the length of this line is 5 units. And D's coordinate we found in the previous question as negative 5 and 2. So this line DE is 2 units. And C represents the Y intercept. And the equation of the straight line is Y is equal to a half X plus 9 over 2, which is 4 and a half. So C's coordinate is 0 and 4 and a half. So the length of this line is 4 and a half units. Now there are multiple ways for us to find the area of this diagram. For me, the simplest would be to divide it into two shapes. We already know the dimensions of this rectangle, which is 2 units by 5 units, so it's length times breadth. And the base of this triangle is 5 units. And then the height of this triangle is 4.5 minus this height of 2 units. So this shorter height is 2.5 units. So the area of OCDE would be 2 times 5, which represents the rectangle, plus a half times 5 times 2.5, which represents the smaller triangle which we have formed. And if I simplify this, it will be 10 plus 6.25, and that is a total of 16.25 units squared, because this is area. 4.2.5 says, determine the equation of g negative 1, which is the inverse of g in the form of y equals 2. So we know that gx is equals to a half x plus 9 over 2. Now gx represents y, which is equals to a half x plus 9 over 2. And if I want to find the inverse function, and this is the way you would note, note it in an exam, you would simply swap the x and y's position. But this does not answer the question. The question says in the form of y is equals 2. So I need to isolate y. So I would move over the 9 over 2 and that will become x minus 9 over 2 equals to a half y. Next up, I want to remove the half in front of y. So if I multiply the right hand side by 2, I have 2 times a half, which will be equals to y. And what I do on the one side, I would need to do on the other side. So I'll multiply the left side by 2 as well. And if I multiply out, I have 2x minus 9. 
Therefore, the equation of the inverse function is y is equal to 2x minus 9. In 4.2.6 we have, if hx is equal to the inverse function of g plus k, and it is a tangent to f, determine the coordinates of the point of contact between h and f. Now a point of contact and a tangent should lead you to either setting both equations equal to each other, or you can use the calculus to find the point of contact. So we have fx is equals to a half x plus 5 squared minus 8. And hx is equals to the inverse function of g, which we found as 2x minus 9 plus k. Now at the point of contact, these two gradients would be equal. And we can see that this is a straight line formula. So its gradient would be equal to 2. And next up, we need to find the gradient of the parabola. And if you remember in calculus, that means we need to find the first derivative. So first I will multiply out. So x plus 5 squared is x squared plus 10x plus 25 minus 8. If I simplify, I would say fx is equal to a half x squared plus 5x plus 12 and a half minus 8, which is 4 and a half. And we have learned in calculus that the gradient at any point of a curve or a parabola, in this case, is the first derivative. So we find an equation for gradient. So it will be 2 times a half, which is 1x, and 5 times 1, which is plus 5. And we already have the gradient of the line or the tangent line. That means x plus 5 would be equal to 2. So we are using gradients to solve x. So x is equal to negative 3. And we can use this value to find the y coordinate to help us find the point of contact. So notice the question is not asking us to solve k. The question is to find the point of contact. So in order to find the y coordinate, I substitute x equals to negative 3 into the original fx formula. So it will be negative 3 plus 5 squared, which is 4 times a half, which is 2 minus 8. That is negative 6. So therefore, the coordinates of the point of contact is x equals to negative 3 and y equals to negative 6.